Okay, so far we have been developing this app only with mock data. We did this to save time and focus on the TCA flow. However, it's time to actually use a real web API. Well, kind of real. If you have followed the whole TCA series, you may figure out already that we are using fake store API to build this project. In fact, the product object we created long time ago was inspired by this web API. Fake store is a great and free resource if you don't have time or you don't want to build your own API, but you want to practice any front-end projects like an iOS application. This is the API we will read first to fetch the list of products. That's not all. In order to simulate sending a real list of purchased products back to the server, we will use this endpoint called cards. Just keep in mind that we are not going to save any data to the server. It will always return a status 200, regardless of anything. Although the app is already supporting any failure case, like an internet plus issue, for example. All right, let's get started. One cool thing of this TCA modularity is that we don't care about the source of the API. That means the network configuration could be implemented outside of this project or even managed by a switch package manager. To keep things simple, I will create a new folder outside of online store TCA demo. Now let's create a file called API client. This API client will be the provider of the real implementation to call fake store API with two endpoints, fetch products and send order. And the definition will be the same like we used for product list and card list. For fetch products, we will create a closure with no parameters and returning a list of products. This closure must run in an async context and it can throw an error too. Now for send order, it will receive a list of car item and returning a string message. It must be marked as async throws too. And one last thing, let's define an error type for this API. Let's simply call it failure. Cool, the foundation is set. Now we will define the live implementation for both methods. What I mean by live is basically a term to refer to the production version of an application or the real life call that users will execute. Let's create an extension and define a live static variable of API client. This live property would be the responsible to communicate with the outside world that TCA wrapped into effect objects. For fetch products, we will call the products endpoint throughout URL session using SwiftUI concurrency API with await and try because this call might fail for any reasons. Then we grab the data to transform it into a list of products throughout JSON decoder. And lastly, we simply return that product's object. However, we have a problem here. Product is not conforming decodable protocol. In order to follow this approach, we will have to implement that protocol. Let's jump to product file. Let's create an extension and conform to decodable protocol there. Talking about decodable or codable protocol in general is something to discuss in detail for another video, but I will try to explain this very briefly. Decodable definition contains one initializer. It will provide a decoded parameter. This decoder is the key to understand how to read the data from the API. Since we want to use JSON decoder, we are assuming that data has a JSON format. We will use a method from the decoder called container that will return the represented JSON data from the decoder. However, we need to provide an object that helps us to identify what are the keys in that JSON. The object must conform coding key protocol. The easiest way to provide that information to the recorder is creating an enum where the cases represent the JSON keys. Let's create an enum called product keys and conform it to coding key protocol. Let's use self at the end of product keys type to reference the type object. Now, what are those product keys? There are the keys from the JSON we want to decode, and they must match exactly as they are coming from the web, otherwise the decoding will fail. For example, let's imagine that instead of title, 
the key we want to read is main slash title. In this enum, you can represent this key as main title following the camel case, but assigning a string value that matches the exact name from web. This has the advantages to keep Swift naming conventions and to reference the keys correctly. Just we would require to also mark or enum as string row value. Fortunately for our case, the keys from web are just one word in lowercase. We can simply create enum cases with those names and we should good to go. Once done, we are ready to decode the digestion data and transform it into a Swift object. For example, for ID, we have to call container decode, pass the expected type for Swift, and the corresponding coding ID from product keys we created earlier. Since the mapping might fail, we have to mark it with dry keyword. For the rest of properties, it's basically the same, container.decode, the expected type, and the respective coding key. Hope this explanation makes sense to you. I will cover Corable even more in detail in another video. All right, let's go back to API client and look how product is not generating an issue anymore. Now for send order, we will get car items, generate the JSON payload throughout JSON encoder, create a URL request, add content type has application JSON, set the HTTP method, and send the request back to the server. If something fails during the process, we will throw an error. However, now we have to confirm encodable on car item. We will follow a similar approach like the codable, but here we will do the opposite operation, transforming from a Swift object into one compatible with JSON. First, we create an extension conforming encodable, create car item keys to represent JSON keys, then call encode method, create a container from car items key, and encode the properties to their corresponding coding keys. Look how car items can work with JSON encoded without any issue. It's finally time for action. Let's go to online store demo app and replace the current mock method with the ones from api.live. It's time to run the app for the first time using real web data. Look how the product list contains 20 elements instead of the three we used as mock data. And how we got a success response that is not mocked is actually a response from fake store.api. And we just had to change two lines in the entry point of the app. This is very cool. That's it for this episode. In the next one, we will make some optimizations to the app and also adding empty and error states. Check out the previous episodes in the description below. My name is Pete and this, this is Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.